Good time I had my coffee already. Didn't need a brew. Also, something's going on with Dark Knights. I have no idea what's going on. There's fires and they're all opposing. And it goes on and on and on. So I shared it. So let's get back to what we were doing. We were talking to Swift. That's revolution! The Flame General left word that you are to proceed to the Fragrant Chamber as soon as you've returned. He wishes to discuss your recent discoveries as well as the results of your, our own investigation. Master Alfano has been informed and should be waiting for you outside. Pray proceed to the Royal Promenade with all, all haste and speak with Bartholomew. By the way, I looked it up and I am currently in the content that was released back in 2.3. Mm, uh, second content update to Aroma Born. We've been expecting you, sir. Please proceed inside. Uh, I don't want any of those. Commander Swift has kept us apprised of your recent activities. You've made great strides towards quelling the violence. Despite our best efforts to determine what provoked this uprising, the truth continues to elude us. Have you uncovered aught which might shed some light on the mystery? 
By the way, that voice is Sam Regal of Critical Role fame. Uh, sadly, or not, depends on your current preference. Um, after this expansion, you, somebody else takes over for, for the voice. Which can be kind of jarring when you're used to hearing Sam Regal this whole time. This information does not leave this room. The Syndicate's decision to reject the Doman refugees' appeal for asylum had lasting repercussions. A number of those displaced by the Calamity claimed it was proof of a policy of discrimination. Together with a group of Alamegan refugees, they organized a series of demonstrations to protest against the Sultanate. Demonstrations which became heated, but did not descend into violence. Until a certain incident served as a call to arms. A unit of brass blades sent to supervise a demonstration loosed arrows upon unarmed protesters. It was this atrocity which prompted the refugees to take up arms. I need not tell you what followed. We assumed at first that the attack was born of a miscommunication. When emotions run high, they happen. But suspicions were raised regarding the unit's commanding officer, whom I ordered interrogated. Sure enough, our fears were soon confirmed. The dog confessed that a merchant had offered him coin to give the order. A merchant in the employ of Teleji Adeleji. Teleji Adeleji? But he spoke in favor of the Doman's cause, and has ever seemed sympathetic towards the refugees' plight. Why would he do such a thing? Know you of the Cartano Reclamation Bill? It is a proposal to annex the Cartano Flats so that refugees may establish permanent settlements. When last I looked, that was disputed territory. Aye. Some might even call it a battlefield. The destruction wrought by Bahamut was greatest at the Cartano Flats. That much is common knowledge. What is less well known is that his rampage laid bare ancient Alagon ruins, of which no record existed. There are certain differences of opinion as to how these ruins should be handled, which is why each nation maintains a military presence in the region to this day. Yet differ though we may, we are still allies. Therefore, in the interest of preserving the Aeorzean Alliance, we have reached an agreement. Any conflict which may arise during the course of military exercises in the region shall have no bearing on relations between our nations. In full knowledge of this delicate state of affairs, Teleji Adeleji proposed the Cartano Reclamation Bill, a shameless bloody ruse which stands to benefit him in but one conceivable way. If successful, he will gain control over the disputed territory under the guise of assisting in the resettlement effort. And you can be sure he'll build an orphanage next to every Alagon ruin. The man would threaten the unity of the Aeorzean Alliance and risk countless lives for personal gain. He walks a path all his own. Independent of any faction, and beholden to none of his fellows on the Syndicate. By inciting the less fortunate to violence, he hopes to convince others that the Cartano Reclamation Bill is the only viable solution. His sympathy for the plight of the Domans was not but posturing to gain credibility with the refugees. Of that there can be no doubt. Forgive me, but what could possibly motivate Teleji Adeleji to go to such lengths? What is so special about these ruins that he would risk his position on the Syndicate, and, most likely, 
charges of treason against the Sultanate. Omega. Pardon? An Oligon monstrosity, not unlike the Ultima weapon. Mayhap larger, we know not. It has yet to be fully excavated. Oligon inscriptions indicate that it was created to fell Bahamut himself. If accurate, it might explain why Nail Van Darnus chose to bring the Red Moon down upon the Cartano Flats, given the ends he went to to ensure Eorzea's annihilation. Destroying the one weapon which could stay the Elder Primal may well have seemed like good sense. When first I bore witness to the power of the Ultima weapon, I doubted the evidence of my senses. And now you tell me there is another such weapon. One which could contend with Bahamut. Bahamut! Aye, we were skeptical ourselves. Truth be told, until the Ultima Weapon's existence came to light, we thought the inscription had been mistranslated. At present, Omega is more akin to a fossil than a tool of war, having long since ceased to function. As such, its true potential cannot accurately be gauged. However, if someone were to restore it, as the Carleans did the Ultima Weapon, I have little doubt that he would wield untold power. Power enough to subjugate Uldar like as not, and the rest of Eorzea besides, which is doubtless why Teleji Adeleji yearns to have it. That he should aspire to world domination. He who has ever walked two paces behind Lord Lolorito in matters of commerce. It is in acknowledgement of his own limitations that he seeks this power. Woe betide us all should we allow him to have it. Pray waste no time chasing rats. Only a fool would believe that secrets can be kept in Ulda. It would seem the implications of the Sultanate's refugee problem are rather more far-reaching than we assumed. I should be glad to know the truth, and yet the thought of it all that all this chaos was the product of one man's lust for power sickens me. How long do you think they intend to hide the existence of Mega from the science? That they even felt the need to do so is most troubling. It would be in best interest to learn more of the military activities in the disputed territories. Fortunately, you are already well positioned to do so, Sergeant Winsmall. Well, uh, pray keep us informed for any developments of Cartano. Be gone, whelp. This is no place for children. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was looking for you, mister. You said you were look looking for the man who left with my parents. You know this girl? This is the whole thing where I chased after a merchant. So he visited Stone Throw as well, I see. Did you find the man? Were my parents with him? They were not, I am afraid. However, I can think of several places they might be. If you'd like, we can go and look for them together. Really? You'll help me look, mister? Of course, but first I must needs finish speaking with my friend. He's telling me a secret, you see, so no one is allowed to listen. Mayhap you could wait for me at that pillow over there. It will require but a moment. Okay, mister, I'll be waiting. I'll take her to the quicksand. Mayhap Mamodi will know what to do. A legion of guardians, an aether-starved primal, 
Even dealing with an Asian would be preferable to this charade. Sometimes I fear Minfilia is too ambitious. We rush hither and yon in response to threats as they arise without concern for the strain it places on our limited resources and ourselves. Mayhap the time has come for a change. Essigos, this is Minfilia. I know this is sudden, but I must ask you to return to Revenant's Toll with all due haste. The situation in the Twelveswood has taken a turn for the worse. I will explain in details once we arrive. Twelvesfoot? Then the primal threat she spoke of before has been confirmed. I've received no reports of Ixal activity, which means the Sylphs. Go, Eskos. You know as well as I that the appearance of a primal takes precedence over all else. Oh, and when you arrive, do inform the antecedent that while I'm grateful for her concern, she didn't fear for my safety. I am a more than able to, and capable of protecting myself. For for reasons, I had to kind of open my screen door. So I had to open a window. So off to Revenant's Toll. And I'm actually gonna. I, I made some uh, mac and cheese casserole so, uh, for lunch. Uh, it's probably finished cooling by now, so. Be right back in just a moment. All right. Fortunately, it's not far from the Aetherite. And we have an Aetherite, which is even better. It's a relief to see you uh, healthy and hale, uh, Essegos. The latest news of old Da is most disturbing. Then just to tell her about Alphano. Clearly, the only injury Alphano suffered was through his ego. Doubtless, it will heal ere long. The other scions will need to be present for this meeting. If you are ready to begin, I will summon them. Thank you for responding to my call with such haste. Rest assured, I, I should not have summoned you uh, were it not urgent. It's business then. I have received some most disturbing news from the Order of the Twin Adder. They have reason to believe that the Sylphs may have called forth their revered god in the primal Ramu. Oh. 
I'm sorry. May have? Then it's not certain. The other seeds here informs us that the elementals themselves murmur of, of the Lord of Levin's, Levin's return to the forest. The Sylphlands, however, display no signs of undue commotion. Forgive me, Antecedent, but this this fact it need not contradict the element's testimony. Unlike his most uh, bellicose peers, Garuda and so on, Ramu has reputed to act only in the defense of his children. I imagine he would soon make his presence known if any and he were foolish enough to directly endanger the Sylphs in their or their territory. The abruptness of this development concerns me. Were we not keeping close watch on the touched ones and their movements? And preparations for a summoning ritual were indeed underway. Uh, it would seem surely not have escaped your notice. No, it didn't. I was pretty sure it was going to happen, just not this soon. I beg your pardon, you foresee this eventuality and did not prevent it. I I told Papa Limo. I suppose I could have reported things to Minfilia earlier, but there, there honestly wasn't much we could do except wait and see. You know how the Sylphs feel about people poking around in their territory. They already summoned Remu once right after the Calamity, but that was because the Garleans kept trampling through the forest. And so long as Castrum or Orions stands, the Sylph cannot be blamed for wishing to have the Guardian deity on hand. In short, Edie and I are in agreement. The action of the Forest Folk were inevitable and unavoidable. And I maintain that observation would have remained the best policy had it not been for the sudden influx of strangers into the Black Shroud. That, alas, we did not foresee. By all accounts, the recent violence in Ulda drove a number of refugees to seek safety under the concealing canopy of the trees. It is like that the Sylphs perceived this panicked migration as yet another invasion and quickened their efforts to summon their god. I am put in mind of Titan and the Kobolds. Once again, it is the affairs of men that have paved the way for a primal's coming. Indeed, one cannot help but wonder what manner of place Eorzea would be without the civilized influence of mankind. Be that as it may, this regrettable de development does afford us a unique opportunity. Essigos, though, though your dealings with the Sylphs, through your dealing, dealings with the Sylphs of Little Solace, you once succeeded in preventing an untimely conflict with Gradania. I wonder, might you? Might one who has treated with the Sylphs so fruitfully in the past not achieve similar success with their patron deity? If Remu can be convinced of our intentions, it may be the first step in breaking the cycle of primal summoning. A fond hope. Were such a thing possible, we would not have been at war with the Beastmen since time immemorial. But maybe this time we can... Let us continue this discussion anon. We must needs first consult with the nation most affected by Mamu's presence. The Elder Seeds here has requested your personal involvement as a ghost. Pray report to Commander Hello in the Addisness as soon as you are able. He is my superior. Seal yourself for the worst. While I hope for a peaceful uh, resolution to this matter, experience suggests that your meeting with the Lord Eleven will prove less than amicable. In such an event, your fellow scions will, of course, lend you whatever support you require. Hello, Richardo. Off to Gridania.
Sergeant Winsmell, your arrival has been most anticipated. The appearance of the primal has ever caused for alarm and unease. Will my men stand ready for your any eventuality? I know of none more qualified than you to snuff out this threat. Indeed, I would have you do do so without delay. The elder seeds here, however, would speak with you first. She is of the opinion that your diplomatic rather than martial skills may serve our cause. As I will leave further explanation to our uh, learned leader, pray make your way to Nafka's altar. The conjurer in the attendance will admit you to the lotus stand. The thing they tell me every single time whenever I go to the lotus stand is... Oh, that's why it would work. Is that the, the conjurer will, will show me the way. It's probably because people, like, forget or something. of the seventh dawn on behalf of the people of Gradania, I bid you welcome your presence is of great comfort to us all in these days of uncertainty I summoned you here to share tidings of a most urgent nature but a short while ago the great elemental spoke and his voice was clarion in its intensity Ramu is returned unto the forest. Scarce had his words ceased to echo in mine ears when we were visited by an emissary from Little Solace. Our guest informs us that the Sylphs, too, have sensed the presence of the Lord of Levin. Though his exact whereabouts remain unknown, we may safely assume that the Primal was summoned within the heart of the Sylphlands. Unlike the other Primals you have encountered, Lord Ramu is no raging avatar of destruction. He is revered as much for his wisdom as his strength, serving as both arbiter and guardian to his children. Given that we and the Sylphs found a way to share the Twelveswood, it is my hope that this sagely immortal will be amenable to reason, and that conflict may be avoided. Blessed as you are with the power of the Echo, you are one of the few among us who may commune with a primal without fear of influence. I would ask, therefore, that you represent us in this most delicate of negotiations. The Twelves Wood has suffered enough. Upon this, we and the Sylphs, and I would venture Lord Ramu himself, are in perfect accord. Let us not endanger our shared home by engaging in unnecessary hostilities. Dear friend, I beseech you, safeguard the peace which exists between our peoples. You have my thanks. Apparently, they didn't want anybody to voice himself for some reason. Pray make for little solace, then. A member of the Order of the Twin Adder awaits you there. He will advise you on how to find the Lord of Levin.
an ill wind blows through the forest. Yet, it is not only the Twelve's Wood that flinches at its coming. All the lands of Eorzea shiver in dread anticipation. Have care. So Flynn's early shroud. Sergeant Winsmall, I was told to expect you. I understand you go to treat with the Primal Remu himself, an un inevitable task, uh, but one of which I would no doubt that you're well suited. Excuse me. I have been told that your fellow scions are conducting investigation in the area as we speak, that you may ascertain the location where Lord Levin might be found. Where the Lord Levin might be found. I would ask that you abide here until they return with their findings. I was told the messenger would be sent as soon as your fellow scions finish their investigation. I do not imagine it will be much longer. This one returns and returns with good tidings. Wise ones have finished searching and have wisely identified the precise location where the touched one summoned to Lord Ramu. Your timing is impeccable, my letter friend. Might you be so kind as to escort this good man to his fellow scions? It would be this one's pleasure, walking one. Please, please come with one. This one. Wise ones has ventured deep, deep within Silflands. This one must proceed carefully and keep an eye out for touch. I suppose when this first came out and you didn't have flying, you'd be trying to fight your way through here. This one is most sorry, but this one can go no further. Draw too close to Lord Ramu and this one may tur turn mean and nasty like touch ones. And so this one <clears throat> must say farewell for now. Walking one will find wife's ones not far from here, to the south. Go in safety, walking one. So it's actually, so it's actually you. I'm relieved. For a moment, I thought we were dealing with another one of those confounded self tricksters. I swear, with them wreaking havoc with their skin-changing magic, it's a wonder I'm able to finish making, taking my measurements. Yes, it's quite the ordeal. Ill, you should have seen the look on Jostola's face when the one impersonating you suddenly showed up. That's quite enough, Papa Nemo. Ahem. My apologies. It's not like me to ramble so. 
At any rate, as I was saying, I have finished measuring aetheric activity in the area, and I'm pleased to say I have reached an indisputable conclusion, to wit that Remu was called forth in the vicinity of the Sylph's Aetheri. Wait. Come as a ghost, the Lord of Leaven awaits. Titan, Garuda, and Leviathan. I am Ramu, guardian of the children of the forest. Thou tramplest upon sacred soil, bringer of light. By what right doth man intrude in this sanctuary of the Sylphs? The Gridanians proffer peace? Their words are born of delusion. Thine offer, an insult. Thou speakest of harmony. Yet carest not for my children's desires. They did but wish to dwell beneath these boughs in solitude. Yet even that was too much to ask of man. Thus did they turn to me for succor. The sentence I pronounce upon thy kind is just. Redonian or Garlean, it matters not. The good intent of one excuseth not the misdeeds of the other. Thy conflict hath brought naught but anguish and misery unto the forest. All blame doth lie with the darkness that resideth in the breast of man. Whence sprung this calamitous seed? In the beginning no such duality existed. Were light and dark given form when man was born? It would explain much. Not least why strife and sorrow follow ever in thy wake. Thou canst not deny the urgings of thine own nature. Knowing that thy mere presence here portendeth tragedy, wilt thou persist in this pretense of peacemaking? the crystal which I bestowed upon my wayward charges, that they should entrust so precious a gift to thee. Thou standest apart from thy kin, thou art the bringer of light, I, but there is something more in thee. Very well, I shall consider thy proposal, shouldst thou survive my trial. If thou wouldst champion the cause of harmony, I must have proof that thou art fit to play the role. Weather mine eye, and prove to me thereby that thou hast strength enough to stay the darkness which threateneth to consume thee. Yet if thou shouldst be found wanting, 
Know that all men shall perish in the storm of my judgment. Come to me, bringer of light. I shall await thee on the field of battle. Urianje, it is rare indeed to find you so far from a tome. The Lord of Levin himself. Never till this day had I looked upon his visage, save in painted renderings made faint by time. Ever shall this scene remain etched in my mind's eye. <clears throat> Beg pardon, my lady. I must beg thine aid on a point of research. If thou art resolved to face Lord Ramu, I would ask thy leave to observe the event. Any right, cars we get to try. I mean, he even said, trial. <laughs> Should you survive my trial? How appropriate. But what to do, what to do in the meantime? Well, I got another quest over my full botany. I mean, <clears throat> we did get a lot more uh, when we faced Garuda. I keep forgetting if I actually had, had shown that uh, clip or not, but... In, in, in some sense, all of the... the... Uh, all the primals are in some sense a, a an NPC that you end up fighting, but some of them just don't speak much. Oh my dear Eskos, looking looking ever more botanist, I do believe you are ready to take it up further responsibilities for our guild. Guilds such as ours exist only by virtue of the cooperation of their members. Each individual must set an example for the rest of the collectivists to survive. The time has come for you to set just such an example. Matter has arisen, the handling of which I would entrust wholly to you. You may deal with it as you see fit, provided that you see the problem solved. The matter in question concerns a valued client of ours, the merchant uh, Albgast, who would appear one of our number has done something to upset him. Please seek out the merchant at the ebony stalls and inquire about the reason for his ire. Oh, and choose your words well, lest you add fuel to the fire. Maybe that Leviathan was the original Leviathan. Because these primals that we're seeing are etheric constructs uh, created uh, through the belief and worship of the appropriate beast tribe. In the case of the Leviathan, uh, the Sahagan.
and they are wont to basically crush their enemies. Infuses fuses him with this malice. In the case of the Sylphs and Remu, again, he's still an etheric construct, but the Sylphs just want protection. They don't want their, their enemies crushed. They just be like, oh, scared, and they hide behind, uh, they're trying to hide behind things, and they just want to make sure that they're protected. Fucha said she did she good. I'm not a man to mince words, so forgive me if I seem blunt. You know that marjoram what marjoram is? But of course you do. You're a bleeding botanist. It's a very common ingredient in alchemy, isn't it? Very common. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't you botanists supposed to be the experts in harvesting such stuff? Yes, you are. Strange then that the expert who brought me my last batch of fresh marjoram didn't didn't so much harvest pl the poor plants as dismember them. Why the leaves were so torn up, I don't recognize. I couldn't recognize what what they were at first. Needless to say, uh, they're next to useless. So thanks to your herb hacking colleague, I have no marjoram to make my concoctions, which is why I acquired acquired at your guild. Only to be told you were out of supplies, and here we are. Now, if it ain't too much trouble, I'd be obliged if you could bring me ten sprigs of fresh marjoram. In fact, only margarine of the finest quality you would do, as opposed to the fine bleeding puree your bush butchering colleague delivered. Truth be told, I don't much care about your hatchet happy friend. What I do care about is not keeping my customers waiting for the medicine. In short, hurry. Oh, and for the love of God, be gentle with the plants, will you? I shouldn't have to say it, but after the last book, I'm not taking any chances. No, they're con they're etheric constructs. I mean, it's not said in the game that they're etheric constructs. Because these aren't actually removed. These are not actually Leviathan. It's not actually t uh, uh, the Titan, Garuda, and, and Ifrit. These are just manifestations of these, these beings. By the way, the belief of the people who conducted the ritual to summon them. Like, if we were to summon, summon Ralgar, for example, it wouldn't actually be Ralgar. It's just an etheric construct. Ralgar doesn't need summoning. <laughs> he would just come. <laughs> but like most gods, they... they Watch from afar. They don't actually physically interact. Alright. I need fresh marjoram. Mar-jor-am. The branch. Just notice that it's from harvesting and we're looking for high quality shit. Like, like you were, you were saying that Le Leviathan in all Final Fantasy games except for the sixteen, he's always aged you. Well, that was probably actually Leviathan, <laughs> like the real Leviathan. The Asians are. Uh, are provoking uh, the beast tribes to summon their the uh, there are their construct versions of the primal so I mean any god I would believe would be massive if they chose to be
I like how you can just like whack a plant and get hummus. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's how, how actual hummus is spelled. Hummus does not grow on cheese. Hummus, the actual hummus that, that I've been known to enjoy to eat, is actually made of chickpeas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look up, look up hummus. It is a chickpea, a chickpea puree. I, I think there's more to it than just chickpeas, but the primary thing, the primary portion of it, like like guacamole is basically mashed up avocados, right? I mean, and additional seasonings and ingredients, but. The primary thing about it is avocado. The primary ingredient in hummus is chickpeas. I think I actually watched an episode of Good Eats where we made hummus. But again, they, they, they spell hummus in, in here as H-U-M-U-S, when it's actually H-U-M-M. U.S. Maybe I.S. Oh no! Oh, I don't want. I want Bush. Well, during my 19-minute uh, wait for striking tree because uh, I queued as DPS. Not everybody knows what what some of their favorite foods are made of. <laughs> like chicken McNuggets is made. It well, if if you dig deep, there's chicken in there, <laughs> but. In order to to get to the point where they they shape it and then uh, tempura fry it, yes, it's tempura frying. Uh, is is the type of fry they for the for chicken McNuggets. They uh, use something called pink slime, which sounds disgusting. It kinda is. I can't remember what is pink slime again. Pink slime, also known as lean, finely textured beef, or LFTB, of finely textured beef or boneless lean beef trimmings, or BLBT. It's a meat byproduct used as a food additive to ground beef and beef-based processed meat as a filler.
Actually, I think that might have been previous chicken McNuggets. Because now that I'm looking at it. Or at least they're still cl claiming... It, I think it's it's the same process as, as what's described in Wiki Wikipedia. But it, it says, according to the McDonald's website, McDonald's chicken McNuggets are made with 100% white meat chicken and no artificial color colors, flavors, and preservatives. The chicken, which is cut from the tenderloin breast and rib, gets mixed with the marinade for flavor to help the chicken McNuggets uh, keep their fun shapes. So, basically, they do the same thing that they would do with, like, beef they do with chicken. So it's still 100% chicken, <laughs> white meat chicken, the, the big difference here is that it is heavily processed. It, there's... Hey, but here, in the end, it, it's really tasty. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it's heavily processed. But it tastes good. <laughs> I'm not gonna complain. The weird things you, you end up talking about when, you're do, when you're doing a, a, a stream. The only thing is that a lot of a, a lot of streams will end up being. Uh, Oh, okay. So that whole uh, uh, dark, I got this whole dark night thing that uh, there are people lined up and posing into this, in the old uh, promenade. And I was like, uh, what happened? Uh, what, what, huh, what, what? I'm sure there's a, an event. I'm not going to disturb the event. I'm going to just, you know, observe. Like, apparently the author of Berserk passed away yesterday. So. Looks like it might have been a uh, memorial ceremony. Yeah, I, I, one thing about McDonald's, uh, especially when going to other countries, is um, they do try to, you know, at least while they have their classic stuff, a lot of their classic stuff, they still try to um, have some more cultural, culturally significant food, so... Your mileage may vary, like you probably have never had a McRib. Which, for all intents and purposes, is a bunch of pork meat that's uh, uh, shaped into a, uh, a patty that's, <laughs> that's turned into pork pig slime. <laughs> And formed into a patty and made to look like it has grill marks <laughs> or, or places where a rib bones would be <laughs> probably made with pork rib meat and slathered into a uh, fabric some sort of barbecue sauce uh, if, you, if you go to the myth mythical chicken um, channel or mythical kitchen channel on YouTube. Um, they one of one of the shows that they have is called Fancy Fat Food, and one of them they do is the McRib. Uh, unfortunately, they were doing it at a time when the McRib was not available. <laughs> so normally they have like a tasty the original beforehand, and like right before they they try their their fancified version. 
I don't know, it'll give you some idea of how they make that. I think it's, I think they use pork at least. I like how it says the estimated or average wait time 16 minutes and it's 18 minutes and 30 seconds. Happens quite often for these things. This is why I can't wait till I get into Heaven's Word and I can start leveling a uh, healer and then try to keep that leveled up alongside my a monk so that my, <laughs> I can go through queue times a lot faster. I have been trying to, to level up a white mage, but I have a lot of things to do on my main. Oh, my thing's done. Back to Gridania. Oh, yeah. A, a regular fried chicken? When you're just talking about fried chicken? That's a completely another matter. <laughs> that's a different dish. And don't be confused with chicken fried chicken, which is a misnomer. It is not actually chicken fried chicken. It's kind of redundant. It's chicken is fried. Fried. It is still fried chicken. It's just a style of fry is is what's actually better uh, referred to as country fried chicken, which is another name for chicken fried chicken. And what also bugs me is that there's chicken fried steak, which is basically a, a, a pounded out uh, beef fried like chicken fried chicken. So it's really just country fried steak. I will say that there's never, there isn't anything called chicken fried chicken. Ever. There's no reason to call something fried. Because chicken fried chicken are also the same thing that you can get at Kentucky fried chicken, which they just call the fried chicken. Hand over my, my high quality margarine. Oh, the marjoram and such fine specimens. I'm sorry I gave you such a hard time, Fred. Thanks to you, I can get back to you. It's making echo drops. Do you know of echo drops? They're an alchemical concoction that restores voice to silenced lips, allowing the imbiber to to cast spells again. Conjurers and psometrists never leave home without a bottle of three. But I must say again, there are some of the finest specimens from Marjoram I've seen, and there are none the worse for the picking. It's clear you know your way around a plant. All I did was I took a scythe and went, shunk. <laughs> I just gave you the good ones, set it up. As for your colleague with a heavy hand, I'm certain your guild will deal with him appropriately. Thank you, and send my regards to Fufucha. If you want to try food that tastes good, but is not necessarily good for you, the United States is one of your best places to go. Mm. Uh, fun fact, my favorite meat is cow meat. I'm a beef person through and through. Plus, ground beef freezes well, at least in my humble opinion. Right, so where was I? Fine. I should ha uh, have more pork and more chicken, but. Although I do sometimes do pork um, uh, when I make my meatloaf. Because when you make meatloaf, 
You don't want just beef. You do like a pound of beef and a pound of pork. Mix it together with some egg and some breadcrumbs. Um, I throw in some Parmesan cheese. And milk. Yeah. I have, I have a recipe for a cheese stuffed meatloaf, which is really good. Although that doesn't use milk. That just uses more bread cones than I use in my normal recipe. My personal recipe, I should say. Although, you know, I should probably try just doing my personal recipe for the meatloaf. Because all it really is, is you, you, you have the meatloaf and then you, you have to put it into a loaf pan or um, other dish. And you start by basically molding the molding the sides or you, you integrate some of the cheese into the, the actual meat mixture then you fill the sides and the in the bottom bottom with it then you then you just put the cheese in so and so that then you put in a meat top I don't have a bread pan I have a slightly different pan but it works Works just fine. Normally, when I make, if I'm just making my my normal meatloaf, all I'll do is take a sheet pan, line it with aluminum foil, and just plop it down and just shape it like a bread loaf. <laughs> then slather it with uh, something, usually ketchup. Ah, there you are. Thank you for a job well done. There's no need to report the details. I've already heard all I need to know. It's my belief that botanist in question was not but personal gain in mind when he was hurriedly harvesting the marjoram. In his haste to complete the task and reclaim his reward, he damaged the herbs and rendered them useless. Such greed brings shame not to honor guild, and I will not tolerate it. The offender's name shall be struck from our roll. Yeah, I don't really have a setup to, to like like film it but hey we do have episodes of let, let's talk about food although we don't really go deep into to recipes or anything as i taught you when you first came to us botanist nurtures the natural environment and the mutual respect of man and wood wait he who thinks only of his own benefits has no no respect for nature and is unfit to call himself one of us of course, you are hardly need reminding of this. Something tells me you shall never give me cause to worry. But let us speak of cheerier matters. Now tell me, did gathering the martyrdom pose you with any trouble? If you ever find your work unduly onerous, you might consider outfitting yourself with better gear. Basically, it's the, the whole gear talk about better gear. See here. Uh, I'm wearing those. Uh, I'm wearing those. I'm also wearing those. I'm also wearing that. So I'll just take the uh, piece. Oh, I have another quest for it, but I need to quickly become a monk and uh, go to the striking tree hard. You know, no one ever really calls the uh, calls each of these instants by their uh, by their name. Like this will flash up the striking striking tree hard. By the way, there is no normal for this. <laughs> it's just hard, and it's honestly not that hard. But it's harder than than like a normal other drow. So. I suppose it's all right. They always call it by the primal's name. So, do you want to cue for remove? That do you want to cue for the striking, striking tree?
He's a flashy old man. A poor black mage. Woo! I just realized I got buff. Samurai around here somewhere. Hello, I'm like single focus on the boss and not looking at the ass. LB3? Well, anything that's in, that's in like 
some other game, they try to be pretty uh, consistent. Uh, I actually don't want to give one to that person. I have taken thy measure, bringer of light. And I judge thee a worthy champion. The task of excising the sin that hath taken root in man's heart is thine. Shrink not from employing thy strength in service to the forest and the wider realm beyond. Like hungering shadows do the enemies of harmony gather, and meekness will but feed them. If man is to be delivered from the dark, it shall be by thy guiding light alone. Stray not from the path, for if thou dost, thy people shall be truly lost. Thou hast slain the Lord of Levin. A regrettable act, but a necessary one. Well, he had also kind of offered himself up. Also, it's one of those things, like, after he talked to acknowledge what, what he said, said, I would have given the serpent the salute. But of course, I can't do that because it's got the same. In witnessing thy struggle, the truth hath been revealed unto me. If I mistake not, it may yet prove a chink in the eternal armor of the Asians. But let us conclude our present business. I shall expound upon my findings at the Rising Stones anon. Sergeant Winsmall, you, you have returned. Dare I ask how Ramu received her visit? Well, he challenged me, and... Well, I beat him. He challenged you to a test of arms? It is well, then, that you have some experience in such matters. The people of both Britannia and Little Solace will be relieved to hear the Lord of Levitt has accepted you as the forest champion of peace. I have performed a mon you have performed a monumental duty this, this day, Sergeant Winsmall. The elder seats here must be informed of your deeds at once. Elder seats here will wish to hear of your experience for sand. Pray return to Gridania and make directly to the Lotus Stand, the conjurer at the Alpha's altar. Blah 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 blah. They every single time when somebody sends me, they remind me to talk to the silent conjurer who isn't silent because they, <laughs> they talk to me actually hold on <laughs> i can do this this is free i shouldn't waste my yell utilize your free teleports whenever possible folks Utilize them to also save money. If you know wherever you, you've set your turn to is closer to where you are, then use that and then teleport to where you want to go, and it, it, it's less expensive. Oh, I could have used the Aetherite to, 
uh, also teleport over to Nafaka's altar. In the Conjurer's Guild. Welcome back on Inside. Uh, we we who knew of your mission have been most anxious to see your return. The Elder seats here awaits you within. You are returned to us, dear friend. And none the worse for bearing the heavy burden which I did press upon you. Most glad am I of this. I am informed that your efforts to negotiate a peace with Lord Ramu ended in conflict. Pray tell me, what befell? Well, he essentially challenged me Ramu to a duel. Ramu made trial of you? I fear there is truth to his claim. It is the darkness within us that attracts the darkness without. It cannot be denied that misfortune follows man. For evidence, one need only look to the conflict brewing in Cartanel, or to the rising flood of refugees. Our shared struggle against the Empire should have served to seal our union. Yet the ties which bind the Alliance strain under the weight of gross self-interest. As the scars of the Calamity begin to fade, so too does our sense of common purpose. Yet now is scarce the time to forget our shared responsibility. If this new sprung realm is to survive beyond its infancy, it must needs be nurtured by all. Eorzea must be as one. Yet I fear that dream is still far off. On behalf of the people of Gridania, and the Elementals both, I thank you for all that you and your fellow Scions have done. Full oft have I been compelled to look to you for aid of late, and offered all too little in return. As leader of this nation, I shall endeavor to prove a more worthy ally to your cause henceforth. Lord Ramu has departed, yet the keening of this ill wind grows no less insistent. Voices of the forest, pray speak and I shall listen. What unseen evil begets this unease in my heart? This ends another daunting mission, eh, Ersegos? I'd hoped Lord Ramu would be persuaded with words alone, but nonetheless, I can only admire the adroitness of which you responded to the primal's sudden challenge. And it seems that Oriange, too, was pleased with the outcome. What say, Ersegos? Shall we gather back at the Rising Stones and ponder the lessons of this day? Um, before we do, I'm going to check something.
I have a thought. I'm not sure if it'll work, but... Oh, somebody needs to, to, to dye my curtain outfit, but I can't. It is not dyeable. I think the next set. is. Welcome back, as the ghost. Where do your momentous encounter with the Lord Remu precedes you? I would fain share news of mine own, but Orianger's discoveries must take precedence. Upon witnessing your defeat of the Lord Levin, our learning companion has st struck by a profound insight regarding the nature of Asian's immortality. Let us assemble and discuss his observations together. is ready, let us begin. Berianger, the floor is yours. As all here assembled now know, in its final hours as our order's headquarters, the Waking Sands did play host to a most unexpected visitor. I speak of the Asian clad in white, Elidibus. Unwelcome though his presence was, his words that day did serve to confirm a truth long suspected, that the Asians are eternal beings to whom physical destruction is as a temporary inconvenience. In the intervening time, 
Arianger and I have striven to discover a means by which the Assians might more permanently be slain. And tis my belief that we have found the thread that will allow us to unravel the twisted skein of their existence. In the moments prior to Leviathan's most recent manifestation, the Sahagin Elder who summoned him was observed to undergo some manner of ascension. The etheric readings taken by Yashtola at the time of this transfiguration have proven most enlightening. The disruption to the flow of ether was sudden and dramatic. So tangible was the agitation, I scarce had need of my goggles. The significance of Yashtola's readings might better be understood in the context of mine own, taken at the instant of the Lord of Levin's demise. Unlike the Primal, the Sahagin was not subject to etheric dissipation. Before discussing our new discoveries, it may benefit us all to recall what we know of etheric behavior. Let us begin at what some might call the end. When we who dwell in the material realm die, our spirits dissolve into the flow of ether and are returned to the ethereal realm. In turn, the restless energy which suffuses that plane streams back into our world, giving rise to new life. Tis as the heavens did decree, the way of all mortal souls. Twixt this world and the next do the ethereal current swirl, bearing the very essence of life. Thus doth the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth continue unabated. Primals behave somewhat differently. In order to manifest and then maintain a physical presence in this realm, they must consume vast quantities of ether, most often in the form of crystals. Though they may seem to live, their flesh is but ether given shape. Theorem constructs. Thus, a defeated primal leaves behind no broken corpse. Rather, the essence of its form seeps back into the land whence it came, and the energy of its shattered spirit is called back to the ethereal realm. And there it waiteth, till next the prayers of the faithful do draw it forth from the sea of ether to take their offering of crystals and make for itself a new body. Which brings us on to the third group, the so-called immortals. They exist in a manner all their own. Quite. Even as the Sahagin Elder fell to the Admiral's musket shot, I witnessed the release of an ethereal cloud, which immediately took possession of a nearby minion. A soul that dissipateth not upon the death of the flesh. The secret of life everlasting, and in the claws of a Sahagin no less. But I wonder, what would happen to one of these obstinate spirits should there be no suitable host for it to claim? If mortal death entails a return to the ethereal realm, it seems doubtful that the soul of an immortal would venture there. Nay, it merely withdraweth the distance unto the shore of the ethereal sea, perchance, but no further. Yes, it exists in neither this realm nor the next, abiding instead in the space that lies between them. The Assians took control of Thancred by means of a Crystal of Darkness, an artifact which, if our theories are correct, serves as a gateway to the place I have just described. I was hoping people had forgotten about that. I am sorry, my friend. For a mercy, the weary road of our research hath brought us unto an answer. The Sahagan ascended to an immortal state, but he did not possess a crystal of darkness through which to flee this realm. Thus was he consumed by Leviathan. 
If we could entrap the spirits of defeated Asians in like manner, and thereby deny them resurrection... Therein lieth the path to victory. Thou art most perceptive, my lady. Only when we have trapped the bodiless soul within an ethereal prison can we hope to defeat its unnatural constancy. Thus might even an eternal paragon be consigned to oblivion. These feats are, of course, far easier said than done. At present, we lack a viable means to entrap and extinguish an Asian soul. Yet, I believe it to be possible. The pieces of the puzzle lie before us. We have but to put them together. I will depart at once to convene with the sages of Charlian. Together shall we divine the steps by which our goals may be achieved. I have the utmost faith in you, Archon. Beg pardon, Antecedent, but I would raise one final matter. Even now, a Charlian survey party seeketh to ascertain the fate of the students of Baldessian. Their findings shall soon be known to us. Though you harbor feelings of dread, I bid you surrender not to sorrow, but abide instead in hopeful prayer. I shall, Archon. Thank you. The Lord Eleven has returned to the ether, as was Leviathan before him. Ramu's acquaintance, acquiescence was most intriguing. Inferno, Vortex, Crag, Whirl, and Leaven, all have been humbled by the bringer of light. A lim the limitless potential of man Hydaelyn's servant grows mightier by the day. Yet he prospers as great cost to his mistress, whose strength is all too finite. Seven times have the masses survived the rejoining, but their souls have grown weak and wane. Yet even as it enumerates the ardor and powers of master, all that remains is to nurture the strength of the gifted to forge the final key. And that is the task which we bend our every effort. Divine seeds and divine scenes were were ever want to quicken in his Ozias for the soil. We need only lead men to the field, then by the eager hand shall my new deity rise. That which is shattered was shattered shall be be made anew, and the one true God shall come again. What is the overarching story between for the entire existence of Realm Reborn to Shadowbringers? The uh, Hydaelyn and Zodiac. The Zodiac is basically the dark version of Hydaelyn, essentially. You know, I swear I read somewhere in lore. I, I can't point to it, so maybe I'm wrong. 
that at one point in time, Hydaelyn and Zodiac were like of one being. And something happened that separated them. And that separation essentially caused an imbalance between the two. And now the now there's essentially a battle between the two. One for life, one for well, death. I don't know. I don't know what the specifics are for it's in the arc, but Now the matter of Ramu has for the present been put to rest. There's something I would show you, Eskos. This is a letter of thanks signed by the leaders of the Aeorzean Alliance, acknowledging the science tireless service of the to the realm. It mentioned in particular the names of all the defeated primals, Freet, Titan, Garuda, Good King, Mogamog XII, Leviathan, and now Ramu. Needless to say, there is only one among our number to have faced them all. And though these words of gratitude are addressed to our order as a whole, I feel they are meant for you above all others. I too must offer my heartfelt thanks for all you have done. In the course of your duties, you have never once failed to answer my call to arms. You are a true hero, Essigos, and Eorzea is that much the safer for your presence. Pray, do not misunderstand me. I said safer, not safe. I know only too well that we can ill afford to lower our guard. The Asians may be relied upon to sow chaos in this realm until such time as they are forced to stop. Why, even without their encouragement, you may be assured that men would uh, ferment strife on his own. And that is to say nothing of the priest tribes. Unless we learn to live in harmony, the primal stew will return to plague us again and again and again. And yet, despite all this, your deeds serve to inspire the people, to give them hope for a better tomorrow. And there is no greater gift. That we, we have the courage to strive for what might otherwise seem an impossible peace, we owe in no small part to the dangers we have faced on our behalf and the people who have won over to our cause in doing so. Our list of enemies have ever been long, and think of the allies with whom we are now blessed. Of the sylphs of little solace, who wish not for conflict. Of Elise, who strives to unearth the terrible secrets of the calamity. And then there is Sid in the, the Fellowship of Noah, racing to unlock the mysterious and ancient Alag. We might be spared the horror of another Ultima weapon. Of course, when speaking of our greatest allies, we must not forget those closest to us, by which I mean our fellow Scions. Thanks to their many and varied talents, our Order is uniquely equipped to combat the far-reaching corruption of the Asians, and combat it we shall. Your enthusiasm is truly heartwarming. Uh, antecedent, given uh, our embarrassing wealth of allies, I trust it will not not inconvenience you unduly if I absent myself for a time. Alphadil, I take it the troubles in Uldah no longer require your attention? They are yet some troubling on some rumblings of discontent, but the air of simmering violence is largely dissipated. Tis to report such that I stand before you now. That, and to speak to you concerning the new organization we discussed. Ah, I have a message for you from Mel. Ahem. You recall the refugee girl, the one whose parents were missing? They were found unharmed. She wished me to pass on her thanks to you. My Alphano, am I to understand that you made the effort to remember the poor girl's name? I look forward to reading all about her in your report. I do hope you left nothing out. <laughs> Eskos, you may have been, been away from Resident Soul for some time now, I believe. Might I suggest that you put 
The affairs of the realm to one side for the moment. Take this opportunity to reacquaint yourself with the town. Which reminds me, one of the Domen children recently inquired as to your whereabouts. Gibson was his name. I believe he has a small matter he wishes to share with you. Why not oblige him with the visit? Look, it's Mr. Eskos. He's back from his adventures. We heard you were off fighting primals and that you were some of the strongest enemies you could ever, ever face. I wish I could see you in battle. Anyway, we all want to be heroes too, so we finally formed our own Domen Adventurers Guild to protect all of the Domens. Oh, do you think you could train us today, Mr. Es Mr. Eskos? Could you, could you show us how you fought the primals? What's all this commotion, then? Mr. Boulder. Mr. Kulatan. The Kulanet. Kultanet. Kultanet. <laughs> Something like that. I'm assuming that it's a, a French pronunciation because a lot of the, uh, the L's and names are French. I only speak French. I only speak with, with an outrageous French accent. Did you know that Mr. Eskos is back? So it would seem. Welcome home, Eskos. My companion and I j but recently became full members of the science, and I believe proper introductions have yet to be made. I am known as Hori Boulder, and this bookish fellow is Kulanet. Though we remain largely unproven as adventurers, we have taken it upon ourselves to instruct the Domen younglings in the art of combat. Uh, I told you, Mr. Boulder, we are not younglings anymore. We're adventurers. And we are just asking Mr. Esco to give us some special training. I think you're, we're ready to hunt monsters alongside him, don't you? Well, you certainly <laughs> you've been diligent with your drills, but I'm afraid the fe the feeds of Mordota are still ever so slightly too dangerous for you. I have a counter proposal. What if I were to cross swords with Essigos? A demonstration of skill at arms, if you will. Hori, if I didn't know any better, and I do, I'd say you were merely seeking to test yourself against the legend. Ha ha ha! Well, mayhap I am. But what matters the motive when the children stand to learn so much from the lesson. What say you, Essigos? Would you consent to spar with me? Smile and nod. Hooray! We're going to have a tournament. Come on, everyone. We must prepare our gear for an outing. Do try not to disappoint them. Hmm? Have faith, calling it. I shall summon every ounce of my strength to. It says ounce or it's like I think it's pronounced ounce, but it's ounce. <laughs> it's it's like malm, which is mile, yalm, which is yard, ilm, which is inch. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's anyway. It's it's my strength to make this a worthy contest. The fields to the east of town should prove suitable for, for our purpose. I very much look forward to our bout.
Honestly, I don't know how much of fields this is. Time for our duty. It's not really a duty. It's just an instance for version for us to fight, so we're not interrupted by anybody. So it's good to you read to this, Esco. So I trust you are ready to begin. I'm being hampered. I may be fifty-six, but it's making me fifty in order to do this. And there's really no change in everything that I do. <laughs> Just the power level. Besides, you be at the same level as Hori. Also, Hori is kind of a uh, unfortunate name. Anyways. Very well, let us not keep the youngings waiting any longer. Um, Hori, are you certain you wish to fight alone? This is Essigos that you're about to face. What better way to test my mettle? Pray allow me to attempt the first round unaided. After all, it was this hero hero's legend that led me to join the science to begin with. Without Essigos to inspire my efforts, I would not be half the warrior I am today. Your point is well made, but remember, this is for the children's sake as well as your own. Should it appear the contest will end too swiftly, I shall add my spells to your blade work. Hello. You haven't begun yet, have you? Oh, that should have been. Hello. You haven't begun yet, have you? Ida? What? Who are these people? When we heard that they, about your sparring match, I told everyone I could find. Thought you could use a crowd to cheer you on. Yes, and there's still more to come. When I mentioned Esco's name, the reaction was quite enthusiastic. Why, my own popularity seems to have a, uh, seems but a sickly shade in comparison. You best claim victory, bringer of light. Your burgeoning reputation is at stake. Well, our teacher won't be beaten so easily. He's a master swordsman. You can win, Mr. Boulder. We shall soon see. Be on your guard. I barely even got through my rotation. This folder won't lose, will he? It's not over yet. It can't be. I, the children, have the right of it. Tis time I join the fray. On your feet, Hori. Watch this. I'm going to just ignore him. Oh no, he looks hurt. Oh, I guess I can't. Wow. He's not just a conjurer, he's an arcanist, he's a thaumaturge. I just did that leisurely, by the way. <laughs> you, <coughs> you have best of me. I yield. Same time! Well, you knew you couldn't lose as a ghost. None can defeat the guardian of Aeosia. Now I see why they send you to deal with the primals. There's much work to do if I'm ever to attempt the same.
impressive as always, I suppose. It is ever a pleasure to witness the spectacle of your martial prowess. And judging from the smiles on all these faces, they too appreciate the hard-won strength that keeps the perils of the realm at bay. Guardian of Eosia. Yes, that is the most fitting title. Do you recall when we first met? Twas at the memorial service at the Battle of Cartano. At the time, I yet attempted to understand this land of Eosia. I sought to grasp the reason why Grandfather willingly sacrificed himself to protect it. I shall speak plainly. My initial impression was less than favorable. Dire problems abounded, and yet the effort I saw expanded, expended towards their solution was haphazard and half-hearted. I thought Eorzeans a foolish and childish people. Considering the shambles that their homes was in, I would not have been surprised if some had chosen to swear allegiance to Gaius in the order he proposed to enforce. The legate a single-minded military invasion precluded any such switching of loyalties, of course. Were it not for a desire to continue Grandfather's legacy, I would have abandoned the realm to its fate long ago. The threats were too many, the nations too self-involved and unstable. Twas you who convinced me the salvation of Eorzea was possible. Twas you who taught me, through countless acts of bravery, that my grandsire sought to preserve was not the land, nor its history, nor any single nation. It was the people. Those wonderful, oft infuriating, these stubborn people that suffered blow after terrible blow only to drag themselves back to their feet to face another day. Though he never put such feelings into words, I believe Grandfather's admiration of the inextinguishable courage grew into fervent wish, a wish to aid Eorzea and its inhabitants in charting a course for the future. A wish that has now become my own. I too will endeavor to take up the mantle of Guardian of Eorzea and champion these people who toll towards a better world. Our cause, however, is not a simple one. The troubles that plague us are of a scale that cannot be solved by the signs of the Seventh Dawn alone. No, what is needed to tackle the root of a primal threat and effectively counter the schemes of the Asian is a new, expanded organization that operates beyond the limitations of nations and borders. If you would aid me in building such an organization, then pray let us continue the discussion back within the walls of the Rising Stones. Your course is in the solar. Thank you for coming, Eskos. The world shifts and alters, and we, my friend, uh, must ever be one step ahead of the chaos. What I propose is the formation of a new organization, a group that shall pave the way for a truly united Eosia. Pray forgive me if I tried over old ground, but I would first speak of the grand plan. 
Uh, since the advent of the Seventh Astral Era, then leaders of the three nations have been deliberating over an accord that seeks to bring the desperate forces of Eorzea together into a single entity. A realm and grand company, if you will. The military might of such a might of such an institution would be drawn from every corner of the land and directed against threats of no single nation could hope to overcome alone. Yet while the purpose of this hypothetical organization is undisputed, the logistics of its formation have become the source of endless debate. And the longer these discussions continue, the more I sense the impetus towards unification draining away. Thus have I been campaigning for the uh, creation of what might be considered a trial company. It would be on a much smaller scale than what we hope to eventually achieve, but capable of the same manner of unrestricted operation, according to the science. According to the science. It is my hope that the successful utilization of such a force would lend momentum to the lagging deliberations. Also, being in a primarily military outfit, I mean to assuage fears of its misuse by placing the fledgling organization under the authority of the antecedent. Science worked tirelessly to protect Eosia and its people. But as to as you yourself have witnessed from the refugee revolt, there are limitations to what even we can achieve. With this new company under the science command, however, we will be capable of responding to a wider range of difficulties without straining our resources or overtaxing our formidable talents. The goals of my proposed organization and those of the science are ultimately identical, a point con conceded by all concerned. But before I can move forward in establishing the precursor to the true border-spanning grand company, it is yet necessary that I visit the three leaders and gain their official approval, a tiresome and time-consuming task, which is why I would ask that you accompany me on the journey and attend to the business of recruiting our inaugural members while I otherwise engage with bureau bureaucratic formalities. Thank you. It is reassuring indeed to know that the bringer of light and his discerning eye will be selecting our future allies. Our first destination will be Limsa Liminsa. Let us rendezvous at Bowl Call. Go all the way to Vilbrand. I always called it Vilbrand, but it's Vilbrand. Depends where you put the emphasis on the uh, correct syllable. 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 Ah, there you are. I'm ready to ascend to the bridge and speak to Admiral Bluffswin. Well, the Admiral and I are finalizing uh, permissory boundaries and signing parchments. I would have you begin the recruitment process in this. I have, of course, endeavored to spread the word of our organization through various channels, and I believe a personal approach would reach many who had otherwise remained ignorant of the opportunity. As for potential, potential members, it is of no, no matter or should they already be pledged to another institution, only that they are willing to lend their strength when the situation demands it. Then we needn't range in, into the countryside. The upper decks alone are populated with sufficient candidates to suit our purposes. Once you are satisfied with your recruiting efforts, meet me at the airship ticket counter and we will prepare for the next leg of our journey.
Well, well, if it is an Essigos, I would got, I had not forgotten an adventurer brave enough or daft enough to seek the shortcut into Titan's bedchamber. You remember, O Royal, don't you? Uh, formerly of the Company of Heroes, three whistles at at Bronze Lake. I it ain't often I drag me arse up to Themsa for a drink, but I'm right glad I did. How fare you these days? Hmm, you're looking to put together a new crew? Top tier work. Ha, sounds like a right lark it does. Alrighty, lad, count me in. The heroes might have gone their separate ways, but I ain't ready to climb into me grave just yet. That's a good choice. Former company of hero. Company of Heroes, hero. Precursor to United and Eorzean Grand Company. Hmm. While I do admire the scope of your ambition, my responsibilities here at Naldic and Vimelli keep me close to the forge. I have not the time to be traipsing hither and yon across the realm. Should you require my skills as an armorer, however, I might be willing to accept some special commissions. the bloody elves do you think you're talking to drylander i'm a pirate not some sunny knight in shining plate if you're looking for a self-right fop tried knocking on that on that dandy carved valden's door Let's uh, take a shortcut. We'll go to the corner. Get there. An organization with the freedom to operate with, with territorial impunity? I must say, your proposal intrigues me. But the Krakens well know that there's a, there's a time to act and a time to watch, and I'm afraid this trial company of yours falls into the latter category. And off to the Marauders Guild. Master Alphino's new organization, yes, I have heard of the formation of his trial company, was in the offing. Tis with regret, however, that I must decline your invitation. As commander of the Yellow Jackets, the protection of Nymsa Lamensa must needs receive my full attention. And I can use this to get to the ocean. Efficiency. As it goes, your recruiting went well, I trust. I'm curious as to how my proposal was received to the rough and rowdy folk of Limsa Lamensa. Ah, a member of the legendary Company of Heroes indicated his interest. Astounding! I knew enlisting your aid was the right choice. The few could boast the acquaintance of such an elusive character. I, too, was successful in my task. The Admiral consented to sign all the documents requiring her approval. 
can only hope that my visit with the Elder Seed Seer proceeds as smoothly. Pray continue on to Gravania at your own pace. I shall await your arrival at Nofka's altar. Because we already haven't had an airship sequel in a while. Although I probably could have used my free t teleport because I think my return uh, spell was off the line. Jeez, I've only... I'm only been streaming for 2 hours and 15 minutes? Man, it seems like it's been longer than that. Yeah, I return was off cool then. I think I need to go. My audience with the Elder Seed Two is due to commence momentarily. I would be grateful if you would once once more proceed to the task of recruitment here in Gridania. After you deem the well of potential candidates as run dry, let us rendezvous at the airship ticket counter as before. Put it up to here, anyways. Oh gods, can it truly be you? By what fickle fortune must the first face I see upon my release be yours? Eh? Could it be that you don't remember me? It is I, Laurentis, the man whose crimes you exposed. I was a whaler and a regular patron of Buscarans. Yes, now I remember. Well, of course I, you do. I was beginning to wonder if, if Jail was, had changed me more than I realized. Now that I have any particular uh, wish to be recognized after her shameful conduct. Hmm. The less said about my past, the better, I suppose. And what of you, adventurer? What business brings you to this part of Gridania? Recruiting was for your policy for reformed convicts. As matters stand, the wood whalers would have not more to do with me. This this may be just the second chance I was looking for. Revenant's toll, you say? I shall leave at once. You shall not regret this, I promise you. I am a changed man. Reformation. I mean, he kind of gave himself up after we exposed him, so... Grandfather, you must call it a day. Let us return to the guild and rest or the tormented people give uh, the tormented back gives up on you for for good. I'm terribly sorry, we were just Oh, Esco says it been some time since our paths crossed outside of Copper Bell Mines. Why, you're barely more than of this adventurer then, but look how far you've come. Mother Mayun 
and tells me it was it was you who felled the fearsome black wolf and now you seek stout-hearted souls to fill the ranks of a new order hmm well my cause is and your cause is undoubtedly just and my old companion here would have much re relieved to see you see me in good hands yes i'll do it this is the very thing i've spent my entire venturing career working towards i shall join your company just as soon as i've seen Isidere uh, safely home I don't know why we're asking this guy, but hey, uh, he's part of the quest. You would offer this old man a place in your company of champions? I am both puzzled and honored by your invitation. Pray forgive me, young master, but I cannot accept. I have sworn to abide here for whatever scant years remaining to me and bear responsibility for the evils my lady has wrought upon this land. It's not often a guild officer such as myself gets recruited, but this company yours certainly sounds to have more has some promise, but its duties appear less than focused. I must refuse your invitation until such time as your organization is more organized. Right. Back to me. The Azerite Plaza, so that I can do this again and hit Ripper Point instead. What news I suppose? For my part, the Elder Seed Seer is most amenable to a former wood whaler and a seasoned adventurer. Our company will not lack for variety. That much is certain. An interesting harvest indeed. Shall we strike down to Yulda whilst the iron is hot? Let us meet at the Royal Promenade and endeavor to conclude our remaining business. Our journey draws to a close. And again, for funsies, let's take an airship. Might even be cheaper. I don't know. I can look at the cost. Plus, we get to see the airship. <laughs> Cutscenes. How many more do we have in this patch? Three more quests in the Defender of Aeonia. Lift attendant. The Husting Strip. Houston Strip. Do 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 do. Ulda, the gilded city where one's fortune de defines one's worth. I hope some manner of fortune is with us, and that this final leg proves as successful as the previous two. Might I suggest descending to the lower levels before beginning your recruitment efforts? I 
do not think the Sultana would take kindly for us poaching from her personal god. Let us meet back here at the promenade when your respective tasks are complete. Good hunting, Eskos. Nope. I think there's a time when if you do look out from there, you get a thing. Um, hold on. I think there'll be a bunch of popping around. Let's start at the Gladiators Guild. Word. Hmm? Wait, you're the man who came to the Little Isle Amigo looking for that masked devil. Who knows what would happen if you if you hadn't? I you'd probably be dead and a whole lot more to my friends besides. We were such fools. Any road, that disaster really got me to thinking about our homeland and about the outsider who saved us from ourselves. I realized how easily I had been manipulated and vowed to make for myself a mere more worldly man, so here I am. A new company of champions, and you say it will take me to all quarters of the realm? That sounds exactly like the kind of opportunity I need, and don't worry, I'll take... I'm not the same strip, stripling you let in little Al, met in Little Alamigo. I prepared myself to fight the evil I know... I now know is out there. Next one is, well, say Miner's Guild. Oh, what a happy coincidence. Do you remember me, perchance? I'm Arsene of the Church of St. Adama Ladama. Landama. Thank you again for your timely re rescue. And I must also thank you for pre preventing the fraudulent priest from preying on Drybone's less fortunate, most upsetting business. Are you here with your companion, Thancred, wasn't it? Ah, tis a new companion you seek, then. Your know, proposed organization sounds a powerful force of good, but my place is at the church with the children. Nevertheless, I wish you well in this undertaking. Okay, now I'll still click on her. I'm sorry, you said to recruit me? It's some fa new fashion to, uh, manner or propo propositioning a lady? Well, I'm afraid you are wasting your time. This lady is already spoken for. Good day to you, sir. That attitude is one of the reasons why I'm like, oh, her? Never mind. <laughs> I think the other two are near uh Sephiroth other needs to change, so. Uh, let's go into the back alley. Have you come to tell me the new uh, tell me the news so have you come to tell me the news soldier? Well I've already already heard it. Seems it would be a savior of old dog refugees went and got himself killed and not by her hand. He was just as much of a pawn of the helpless cast-offs he sought to deceive. Eh, that's not why you're here? 
I, you're, you'd be surprised when mermaids drift down to Pearl Lane. I know of this glorious new company of yours and just how far I'd go to, to avoid getting involved with it. Whispers in the street say your organization is funded by corrupt coin, by syndicate money. If you think we're recruiting for just a cause, then you're a bigger fool than I told you. Thank you for A company that looks to cure the Ill ills of the Roman Tire? Listen, friend, I can s scarce bear the complaints of the next all over, let alone the conundrums of a neighboring nation. You didn't actually go anywhere, did you, Alphano? You had already taken care of these before. How fared you, Asagos? What, ha what hidden gems did the streets of Ulda offer up an unrelenting gaze? Well, I found this uh, street rat from Little Alamigo. <laughs> a single Alamigan youth, well, certainly given, up a, given us an admiral start, even if our ranks are yet somewhat thin. In these troubled years following the calamity, talk of Eosia's salvation must seem akin to grasping at clouds. But there are those who have risen to the challenge nonetheless, and the hope that inspires these people are born in no part of the victories you yourself have won. Thank you, Asagos. I will not squander the precious gift you have placed into my keeping. These recruits will become the foundation of a new beginning. And yes, we are free to begin. As you have no doubt surmised, the Sultana has graced my trial company with her blessing. Our first wave of recruitment is over, the documents signed, and the finances secured. There is not to prevent me from taking the next step. Yes, you are concerned by the Syndicate's involvement, as was I. Thus was the origin of every coin of their contribution considered scrutinized and recorded. Their organization will not be built on corruption. Naturally, I would prefer not to rely upon such sources at all, but even my family's substantial coffers could not su sustain a venture of this magnitude. And as for the rumors and doubt surrounding this enterprise, well, such things shall plague us until the company has have had a chance to prove its worth. It will be an easy process, but it will not be an easy process, but we will earn people's trust one success at a time. Speaking of time, we must waste no time. Let us return to the Rising Stones and lay the first stone for United Eosia. Tell me, General, what think you of Alfino's bold endeavor? I think it is more than bold, Your Grace. His organization would pave the way for a united Eorzea. Well do I understand his impatience, since facing the common threat of the Ultima weapon, our nations have seemed farther apart, not closer together. Considering the many problems we face, should we not be glad that someone else is taking the initiative? We have all pledged our cooperation. Yet the grumbling continues behind closed doors. Ulda is not alone in her duplicity. I myself have doubts as to the good this organization will achieve. 
With the inclusion of the finest soldiers of the three grand companies, it promises to be a fearsome military body. But whom will it serve? Even under the watchful gaze of the Scions, it is not unthinkable that such a force could perpetrate a great wrong. Does it not concern you that a significant proportion of its financial backing came from the coffers of the Syndicate? That those unprincipled worms might forge this extraordinary gathering of warriors into a private army? I have trust in the Scions, Your Grace. They have spared us no end of trouble at the hands of the Primals. If they seek reinforcements, I deem it unwise to deny them. As for their finances, full many gave generously. And though our nobles proffered a sizable sum, their coin did not spill from the pockets of Lolorito and his cronies. And what of the presence of our stalwart adventurer friend in this endeavor? I doubt the Warrior of Light would betray our cause. Yes, there is that, I suppose. Yet I have known people to change. Whether we will or no, the events of the Age hurl us this way and that, like a dust devil skipping across the sands. Cannot be done about Telechi? I have explored all avenues available to us, Your Grace. But as Uldan Law now stands, we lack the evidence to convict him of any crime. To arrest him on spurious grounds would only play into his hands. He has all but committed treason, and yet we can do nothing? Bond's big softy. He may Have be a giant hero grace. man, but still. It is not over. I don't know. Would, would, would you ship Raubon and uh, Nanamo? Oh, going back to the Red and Stones.
All right. Actually, I probably should have refilled my coffee while I was at it. It's okay. I like the Rising Stones better than Waking Sands. Much more spacious than... Yeah, much more spacious. Ah, that was not a journey I soon wish to repeat, uh, but I cannot pause to rest. The culmination of all of our events is at hand. I must see to the preparations of the inaugural ceremony. Thank you for allowing me to monopolize your services, Essigos. I am certain the antecedent will be relieved to see you free for other duties. Greetings, Essigos. Alphino uh, tells me all is in place to bring his trial company. Begin his trial company. The Scions shall certainly be grateful to have the support of such an organization. The inaugural ceremony is set to take place here at the Rising Stones. Tataru is cooperating with Alphino to see that all is in readiness, so I'm afraid the recruits themselves have been left to their own devices for the time being. Quite a f number of new faces have arrived at Revenant's Toll of late, and I sh I wonder if Slothborn might not find himself overwhelmed. Would you speak with him and see if there ought be that he requires? What can I do for you, Essigos? I thought you had your hands full helping out with the new ar arm of the Scions. Ha! I barely noticed your recruits arrived. It was barely a trickle compared to the flood of treasure hunters we had passed through here every day. I appreciate your offer of aid. It is more your, your burden that concerns me. I'm told this trial company will answer directly to the antecedent, so I trust that... That means less work for you in the long run. Slothborn, the shipment, we couldn't... <sighs> God's woman, what befell? We... <sighs> we were bringing a shipment to Revenant's Toll, provisions earmarked for the frontier effort. But just as we th uh, sought to cross over into Mordona, we were set upon by brigands. I... <coughs> I believe they may have been heretics. There were many, too many. We only escaped with our lives by abandoning the supplies. Please forgive us. There is not to forgive. Provisions may, can be replaced, but smart soldiers are hard to find. Take a rest and I'll have someone along to tend to those wounds. What to do? If heretics are involved, then this will be more of a case of simple thievery. Yushkar will need to be informed. Whence did these supplies originate? House for Tom, and collected the, the provisions from Camp Dragonhead proper. Understood. I shall see that they are appraised of this development. Essegos, are you not on good terms with the knights of House for Tom? I will be sending them a missive immediately, of course, but I would also have you travel there and offer your considerable talents. Yes, I realize I contradict my earlier hopes and to lighten your load, but I need someone who can help bring this incident to a satisfactory conclusion. Our fa favorable relations with Ishgard are far too important to risk half measures. Thank you for your assistance. I am certain Lord Horshofant will be glad to have your assistance. Why does Ishgard have an entire category? When there's only one destination there? Hmm. 
the wonders. Well, well, isn't my fine friend as a ghost wins ball? Would you care for a plate of roast, uh, karaku? Some mulled wine? No? Ah, I see you have uh, not come into my hall merely to escape the biting cold. I was, in fact, on the verge of opening an urgent missive from Revenant's Toll, and I suspect the timing of your arrival is no coincidence. Strange that the mail got to, to them when I literally instantly teleported from one place to the other. The incident with the new frontier hands? No, no, you need not elaborate. I have been following their progress with no small amount of interest. Brave men and women all. They do our nation a great service. The existence of a fortified outpost in Mordona will do much to dissuade the Empire from trespassing on Curlis soil. Right glad am I that you have chosen to lend your support to this endeavor. Never let it be said that House Fort Tom does not acknowledge the efforts of her allies, or her debts. T'was in the spirit of gratitude that I arranged for sundry supplies to be delivered to Revenant's Toll. That the shipment should chance to be waylaid by heretics is poor fortune indeed. Poor fortune, I say, yet not without precedent. If you would know the truth of it, these incorrigible villains grow more organized with each passing day. This new unity of purpose we attribute to their leader, the Lady Iceheart. But though I have devoted significant resources to the task of identifying this woman, we have yet to learn so much as her birth name. What we do know is that the heretics speak of Iceheart in reverent tones, and would gladly embrace death rather than betray her. Such loyalty is rare indeed. And I fear to imagine what so committed a collective might achieve. The brigands have not yet been so brazen as to risk direct confrontation here in Dragonhead. Some few of their number have, however, been sighted not far to the west of here. And with ever-increasing regularity, a visit to Whitebrim Front may bring you the answers you seek. Will you brave the snows, knowing what implacable foes may lie in wait? Yeah, I got a flying... Uh... A uh, set of magic tech armor, it's fine. Halone's blessings be upon you. Though I take no pride in the admission, many of mine own countrymen are not so well suited as you adventurers to dealing with such foes. Were they dragons? It might be otherwise. But truly, I could not wish for a finer ally. You have done much for my house in the past, and I have no doubt but that I shall have cause to celebrate your deeds again, ere long. Should you learn aught of value, pray return to me forthwith. A warm hearth and a warmer welcome shall be waiting for you. I do find it strange that I can mount up in buildings. Even if I was using the regular chocobo. I feel like by the time I get to the next expansion, uh, Heaven's Word, that I'll be level 60 and I can unlock Gunbreaker and Dancer. <laughs> As goes, is there all you, you would ask of me? I pray speak patently. I'm a man of uh, action and need no honey words. On the trail of a band of thieving heretics, you say, by the fury, but you do seem destined to cross paths with these vil those villains. I must confess, then, that this is a sad truth, that the wilds you hear about are indeed grown thicker with their number. They strike swiftly without warning and are canny enough to evade 
our most able trackers. But it is not merely their newfound organization that confounds us. The heretics themselves all seem somewhat changed. I know not whether, what matter of influence this ISARS wields, but the men, men we face seem utterly lost in the grip, grip of righteous fervor. It is an unsettling and unnatural zeal. Mayhaps you would care to question one of the recent victims, as fate would have it. Your arrival came moments after a traitor was waylaid by, on the road. A patrol found the unfortunate fellow lying senseless in the snow and carried him to the infirmary. Assuming he has regained the use of his faculties, the merchant uh, might recall some small detail that would aid you in your task. Here he is, mistreated uh, merchant. Tell you what happened? Quite, yes, yes, of course. I was, was quite recovered enough for that. Anything to help catch those cowardly blackouts. I was traveling my usual route to, to Whitebrun from when a sudden blow sent me reeling. The next thing I know, I was on the ground and several heretics were rifling through my ca cargo. Arms, armor, crystals, they were taking everything. "'Twas then that one of them n noticed my blurry gaze and stalked over to better acquaint my head with his mace. Before darkness cleaned me, however, I distinctly heard the words return to Snowcloak. I dare say that that is where they are hauling my goods, and you'll not catch me rushing off in pursuit. They tell me it was a miracle I survived at all, and I'm not I'll trust my thick, thick skull to save me a second time. Yeah, draw your weapons, Val. Oh, wait, I recognize you, Venture. You would come seeking heretics? Then you can't, we share a common purpose. We were on patrol when we chanced uh, across one of their raiding parties and pursued them here. By rights, they should have them cornered in this ravine, yet they are gone, vanished, and uh, like icy wraiths. Glimpse the woman top, top the cliff. Could it be Iceheart herself come to sneer at our folly? And to where did she disappear? The heretics must have discovered a passage through the frozen wall, some hidden tunnel that escaped our notice. We have not the men to risk for their investigation, and it would be best that we were to return to Whiteburn Front and lay our suspicions before Lord Drillamont. Lord Drillamont. Talking to Lord Dribbon. I 
kind of my way to get to him quickly. Asko Superiors, I owe you my thanks again. The surviving knight spared no detail in the report. The men who found I found out you found out near you found out near Snowcloak were some of my finest, and they they should be bested. So we handily, I fear, as woefully underestimated the threat that these heretics pose. While I understand you uh, might balk the notion, I might must ask that you put aside your mission and consider the stolen provisions lost for us to us for now. Uh, it would be ill-advised to blunder unprepared into what will well be the very lair of the enemy. Pray return to Dragon Head and inform Lord Horsifon of our discoveries. He will he will wish to plan contingencies of his own. As for Iceheart and her fanatics, the freezing heights of Snowcloak will not shield them from our justice for long. And just because it's faster. Ooh, temperature has gone up. Hold on, I'm going to lose my thing. All right, I'm back. Hopefully we'll cool off a little bit here. Your return is most timely. Of their own accord, my thoughts had turned to your task and the progress thereof. <coughs> I confess, my imaginings <coughs> tended toward the grim and bloody. But you are here now, and I suspect such frivolous wonderings do little justice to the reality of your travails. Tell me, what did you learn of Iceheart? Indeed, and this transpired at Snowcloak. Of all the highlands, that towering wall has borne the worst of the region's brutal shift in climate. 
So inhospitable has Snowcloak become that we have still to survey the area in its entirety. Could its frozen heights conceal the heretic's hideaway? Mayhap a more robust reconnaissance effort is in order. Putting such considerations aside for the moment, we still know far too little of this ice heart. That she is capable of commanding such a band of fanatics bespeaks natural authority. And no small measure of charisma. As much as I would like to fathom this mystery with you, the situation has grown beyond my personal purview. I am bound by duty to inform the Temple Knights and request that they bring this matter to its conclusion. Given the glowing reports the new commander has garnered thus far, I am certain that they can be relied upon to take appropriate action. Though Iceheart's true identity yet eludes us, you have provided us with a point from which to begin. Sometimes it takes but a single stone to prompt an avalanche. On the matter of the stolen provisions, I have already made arrangements for a second shipment to be sent to Revenant's Toll. I could not well allow such an honorable venture to be undermined by one miserable setback. Essegos, good to see you return to the toll. How fared you in the frozen wastes of Corthus? Corthus. Also, Tom is, is send a second shipment. I must send thanks to Lord Horshofon for his continued generosity. Yet even as our town grows in prosperity, I fear it will attract even greater numbers of those who would do us harm in the name of greed or power. All of us, Alphanos, New and Kruitz included, must remain vigilant against such such. I love Salafburn. He has a, a quest for us. While you're away in Curthus, uh, preparations for the inaugural ceremony were all but completed, although Totaru does yet seem somewhat flustered. Uh, I've taken enough of your time. Uh, why don't you head into the Rising Stones and see if your fanatic, uh, your frantic receptions can do, do with a hand? I love Totaru. I love Tataru so much. These parchments need to be sorted in these documents. Why are they even here? Oh, I'm sorely temp tempted to file the lot in my waste paper basket. Oh, Essigos, you startled me. You, you wish to lend a hand? Splendid! Would you be a dear and hand these uniforms to the new recruits? They're scattered about Revenant's toll, and I haven't the time to track them all down. Recruits, know to don their guard immediately and assemble here in the Rising Stones. You'll want to report directly to Alpha No if you don't wish to miss the ceremony. I wonder if the Science will ever have match, match uniforms. A well-funded organization is a well-dressed organization, I suppose. Pick up some uh, unlock quests quickly. Uh, unlock Wrath of Corn or uh, Corn Heroic or Hard. Uh, Amador, keep hard, I think. I was the one to clear it. What? Anyways. Yuhase? Those who believe this company will see no riches or short-sighted fools. The one given, giving to one, giving of oneself, it is an investment of the future. Thus did I sign my name to the cause. Here, I have a uniform. 
these uniforms are a splendid idea. Once our organization has made a name for itself, there, there shall be a wealth of plenty in selling replica costumes <laughs> to the adoring masses. So here's here's how I, I I feel this would actually look realistically. I'm walking around with a big set of boxes <laughs> with these uniforms. These uniforms are like at least the overcoat and the hat. And then going up and it says, oh, hey, uh, I got your costume here. Wait, 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 wait one second. Uh, 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 you have a, uh, oh, there you are. Hi, right, best of be <laughs> best to mimic my fellows here, but I admit that I have no idea what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> oh, our new uniforms are reminded of my induction to, uh, to the wood whalers. Elbird. I don't believe you met. I'm Elbert, and I will be the honor of leading my fellow uh, recruits as captain. Uh, much did I lose in the calam calamity, and I look forward to aiding others in rebuilding their lives. Uniforms are a shrewd decision. There are no easier method of creating a common bond among us on what is essentially a band of strangers. Ergmachas. The Scarlet Garb marks me as a proud member of the Maelstrom and a hardy defender of Lipsa Lamenta. Yet in truth, I stand for the betterment of the realm, and though this new company is a fine opportunity to contribute to grander scale. Thoughts of grander scale. Oh, now that's a striking shade of blue. Put aside my uh, Maelstrom uniform, my wardrobe will certainly not lack of color. Here's one of the Little Amiga would, could learn much from Revenant's Toll that this town could be so alive in the midst of such desolation. I have never worn, worn aught uh, quite so voluminous, voluminous. Well, I'm sure I'll grow accustomed to the extra cloth in time. Essegos Winsmall? Gods, I did not expect to meet you strolling around town. The tales of your primal battles uh, were inspired me to come to Revenant's Toll. It is an honor to receive this uniform from your hands. I shall, shall wear it with pride. Isildea is a last retired from the adventurer's life, so I shall miss his wisdom in, in irrepressible spirit. I've, I am excited to forge my own path forwards. Ah, yes, the uniform. Thank you. Uh, truth be told, the thought of pledging myself to such a lofty organization is somewhat intimidating. Oh, there, lad, lucky for me. I've, yeah, I've suggested giving you a whistle, but I'm not sure if I'd he hear it amongst all the bustle. Ah, proper uniforms and all. This thing will cut off the blood to be had. Not to worry, though. I'm sure she'll be f fine after making a few adjustments.
Yes, as it goes. Ah, Tatar, you mentioned that you were handing out the new uni uniforms. I assume you now met the rest of the recruits? Some few answered the call to arms I put forth through the established grand companies and such. We are not yet an army, but there is, there is much a small corps of elite warriors can achieve. Did I mention I thought of the name for the company? Tis my hope that it shall soon be known across the breadth of Eorzea. A moment of truth draws near, as ghosts. Once the last of the recruits have gathered, I shall make the official announcement. Comrades, your presence here this day signifies the momentous choice that each of you has made. With your strength now pledged to the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, you are beholden to no single nation. You stand as the vanguard for a united Eorzea. From this moment forth, I declare you crystal braves. Let us mend this fractured realm and face our enemies as one. <laughs> Whether it be the Beastmen and their primals, or the conflict in Cartano, it is plain that the nations of Eorzea cannot solve the problems which plague the realm. Thus does it fall to some few heroic souls to succeed where they have failed. Come, take your place at the Scion's side as guardians of Eorzea, and together we shall fight for the freedom of all! For the freedom of all! A rousing speech, Alphano. Or should I say, crystal brave Commander Leverieux? Please, Antecedent. The title is honorary. I shall not be leading the troops into battle, as it were. We are of the same purpose. Let us join hands and do what must be done to save this land. The Scions stand ready. I'm eager to see what the Crystal Braves might accomplish. This shall prove an interesting time indeed for the Scions. Yes, I'm listening. So our worst fears are confirmed. The entire Isle. Such power defies comprehension. Truly? Kryle is alive? Thank the Twelve. I see. Pray, inform me if her condition changes. Yes, I shall pass on your words to Arianger. My thanks. I shall contact you anon. When I learned of the loss of the Isle of Val, I dared not hope that my friend had survived. Putting this happy news to one side, we must now endeavor to make sense of the readings taken by the survey party. It appears the etheric disturbance which accompanied the Isle's destruction is of a magnitude alarmingly close to that of Ultima. Could the Asians be responsible for this devastation as well? I wonder, have you heard aught from the Mother Crystal since the battle with the Galleons? Then she speaks to neither one of us. Heidelin's silence portends not but ill, I fear. Louis Soir, I pray you yet watch over us.
Very good. See that the provisions are prepared for transport. Let us hope that this ship is spared the fate of the last. The winds are uncommonly fierce this day. And that is it for Eorzea, or Defender, the Defenders of Eorzea patch of Rome Reborn. And I'm going to call it early, because um, this is kind of a good stopping place. Uh, I believe the next part is Trader in the Mist, which is, a, which is actually in the Dreams of Ice um, patch 2.4. I'm going to call it because, hey, I got a thing later, and I'm trying to decide a few things. Um, is it okay for a DM to um, thoroughly create a TPK? Like the intent is to TPK the party? Cause don't don't tell my players, but yeah, I'm trying to think of making sure that no matter what they do, they, <laughs> it's gonna be a DPK. Oh, the intent or or retreat. We'll see what happens. But that's that's later. I'm gonna declare this for now. Um, but uh, I'm gonna stop that just because it's a good stopping point. We're at the end of what would normally be the patch for it. And then possibly next week we can get through patch 2.4 Dreams of Ice. And then we have um, essentially one patch after that. So we're we got that the, the 2.5 was split into two parts uh, but they're relatively short. So kind of like just cutting it so that I'm doing that. Although I do have to admit that we did do four of the quests for this patch before. So if I had cut it early last time, who knows? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll jump in again to do a bonus stream sometime this weekend. Um, and uh, start going into Dreams of Ice. Because... I really want to get Ditch Guard. Uh, I really want to get into to the next expansion so that I can unlock <laughs> my favorite healer, which is the Astrologian. But I can't get that until I finish all of these. That way, that way, if I can get my Astrologian to met, then then uh, offline boost that up to my monk. Whenever I have all these cues, I can queue as, queue as a healer instead, <laughs> instead, and. Uh, that will make make those cues go a lot faster instead of having to, to wait around and do stuff. But uh, I'm going to call it for today. But later on today, hopefully if everything goes well, 
Uh, I will kill my uh, D and D party, uh, I mean, bears and dragons, uh, later tonight. So we'll see. I, I'm I'm shooting for overwhelmed more than overpowered, although it might still be overpowered. <laughs> Have fun killing your <laughs> killing your D D party. Anyways, I'll see you later. And again, remember if you want to see any of these vods besides being on uh, the Twitch channel. Uh, they are all archived over to the Cubs Out Loud YouTube at youtube.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Just go into the CWL gaming channel or uh, playlist and they should all be there if I remember to upload them. See you next time.